there's so much media content out there that I'm sure you got overloaded. Some of the stuff. Oh, for sure. Include and couldn't. There was so much stuff that we left on the cutting room floor. I got so into researching ship design, what kinds of ships were made when and for what purpose and what they looked like. I wound up just turning that into its own series. So I have a five issue mini series <laughs> that is about sailors and is sort of supernatural and takes place on a trade merchant ship, as well as an eight page short in the Band of Bards anthology from the static. The opener is called The Infant, and it, it was sort of also born out of this research about a whaling vessel and some horrific scenario happens there. There are stories where you have to do a lot of creating and a lot of inventing, and then there are stories where the world takes care of itself. The research sort of guides you. Everything you read about is just like, oh, that's really cool. Let's put that in. Let's find a way to do put that in there. The very first thing I ever wanted to do when I was a kid was be a marine biologist because I wanted to study sharks. That's what I liked. That's what I wanted to do. And to this day, I know an unhealthy amount about shark anatomy and, and behavioral patterns and species and et cetera. I, I got very specific in the book when it came to the animals that we used and like the kinds of species and where they live and how that like everything works that way. Favorite shark that isn't the great white. Oh, ooh, favorite. So uh, whale shark is my favorite. Spiritually, I, I identify it because it's more, plankton aren't really plants, but it's it's more, it's it's kind of like a vegetarian and I'm, I'm a vegetarian. It's also giant and beautiful and I there's nothing I want more than to, to swim with a uh, whale shark. I love wabagong sharks for how weird they are, but they're made to like blend in. So they've got this weird face that stretches out and they're sort of flat and they're ambush predators. As far as like being a good shark, hammerhead is my favorite. It's the ultimate argument for evolution does what's efficient, not what's aesthetic, because it looks like an idiot, but it is so much better at being a shark than most other ones. And then uh, cookie cutters are probably the weirdest little guys, hold a special place in my heart. Cookie cutters are about that long. They have a bioluminescent strip on their neck, uh, and the point of that is uh, they live at such depths that there's very little sunlight, but there is enough. And so if you look up at them, like as a fish, it looks like they're a much smaller fish than they are. <laughs> and so things will go and try to eat it. They will attach to the thing, create this little ice cream scoop of meat just out of them. That's why they're called cookie cutter sharks because it looks like they just have ball out this little scoop of them. We didn't know that they existed until the Cold War when we had submarines that we thought their sonar kept going wrong and we thought the uh, Russians were messing with them. Like <laughs> we almost got fully into World War III and then a submarine marine surface and one was still attached to like to the rubber and that's how we discovered that the shark is even real <laughs> okay then which one would you get a tattoo of Ooh, this is a legitimately a hard choice <laughs> like, I, I don't have that many tattoos i've got this one which is for a friend and i've got this guy which is for a very beloved pet I'd probably go for a Wabagon, just because they look, they have, they have a unique shape of it. Either that or a hammerhead. So you could have done the cookie cutter and then got you know, bioluminescent ink or something like that. <laughs> U UV ink or something. Or... I don't know if they make that. That'd be interesting. It would either be like a great white where it's everyone knows what it is, or it'd be one with a distinct, you know, shape. Another one that comes to mind, sorry, I'm not going to keep just talking about sharks the uh, whole yeah. time, I promise. But another one that comes to mind is the Thresher shark has this like beautiful long tail that's the entire like length of the rest of its body. And it uses it like a whip to stun fish. They generally travel in, you know, these tight little clusters and it's hard to get one individually, but you just shock them in the water so that they stop moving for a second and then you eat them. It's, it's a really cool hunting technique. Like, <laughs> Well, now I have enough content to have uh, favorite sharks of wells and uh, <laughs> on YouTube. But... Someone is asking the hard... I've, I've never gone into a deep shark monologue on a podcast before, so I know you're asking the right questions. So I'm going to dive into what you like to do. So, I mean, jeez. <laughs>